Like a lot of celebrities, Nicolas Cage has had multiple marriages and more than his fair share of money problems. But what else has the unforgettable actor suffered in his life? Here's Nicolas Cage's tragic real-life story. Nicolas Cage was born Nicolas Coppola to his parents August Coppola and Joy Vogelzang on January 7, 1964. His father was an esteemed literature professor and the brother of filmmaker Francis Ford Coppola, while his mother was a dancer and choreographer who sadly also suffered from severe health issues. As Cage once revealed to Playboy, she was plagued with mental illness for most of my childhood. She was institutionalized for years and went through shock treatments. She would go into these states that lasted for years. Schizophrenia and depression ultimately led to her separating from Cage's father. Her son managed to find a creative way to cope with the experience, as he told The Guardian in 2013. I think I was just, some people would call it under the protection of a guardian angel. Other people would call it a child's solipsism. It's whatever you want to call it, but I was happy in the bubble of my imagination. Despite her health issues, Vogelzang managed to live until the age of 85. She passed away in 2021. In addition to his acting career, Nick Cage is also famous for his many high-profile romances, some of which were very short-lived. He and Lisa Marie Presley, daughter of Elvis, were initially linked in 2000 after meeting at a party. There were rumors of trouble in the relationship, but that didn't stop them from tying the knots in August 2002. She's hilarious. She's, she's a real firecracker and she tells it like it is. The marriage didn't last very long though, because in November of that same year, Cage filed for divorce. Despite the quick separation, the pair appeared to separate on good terms, with Cage's lawyers claiming at the time that the split was amicable. That didn't stop the press from speculating about the reasons for the split though, with Cage's Elvis fandom supposedly a major issue. Presley spoke about her relationship with Cage on Larry King Live in 2003, as she claims that they navigated the rocky seas of their relationship like a pair of overbearing buccaneers. As she put it, when one pirate marries another, they will sink the ship basically is what it comes down to. On the plus side, she noted that they at least managed to remain friends afterward. A 107-day marriage is pretty short, but it's not a record for Nicolas Cage. That honor or dishonor instead goes to his union with makeup artist Erika Koike, to whom he was married for a grand total of four days. The pair were reportedly first spotted together while on vacation in April 2018. They kept their romance under the radar, as they were seen together in public only a handful of times after they started dating. After nearly a year together, Cage and Koei K got married in Las Vegas on March 23, 2019, but then on March 27, Cage filed for an annulment. In legal documents, he claimed that due to his drunkenness prior to the ceremony, he, quote, reacted on impulse without the ability to recognize or understand the full impact of his actions. Per the annulment documents, Cage also accused Koei K of fraud, alleging that she'd deceived him about her criminal background as well as the nature of her relationship with somebody else. The annulment was ultimately rejected in favor of divorce, with Koei K reportedly requesting spousal support for those four days. Which I built together in four days. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, co I'm so confused. In 2007, Nicolas Cage became the victim of a home invasion. On October 1st of that year, he reportedly discovered a man in his gated Newport Beach home and called security for help. It proved to be quite the traumatic experience. The actor was asleep with his wife while their two-year-old was sleeping in another room when he became aware of the intruder. As he recounted to reporters during the 2011 Toronto Film Festival, I opened my eyes and there was a naked man wearing my leather jacket eating a fudgesicle in front of my bed. Cage detailed the incident while promoting his 2011 film Trespass, which coincidentally also centers around a family victimized by a home invasion. The actor ultimately didn't press charges against the suspect, though he also decided he couldn't stay in the house afterwards. In 2008, the suspect, Robert Furo, pleaded guilty to stalking. He was subsequently ordered to enter a six-month drug rehab program and to remain at least 100 yards from Cage and his family. Cinema isn't the only art form that's important to Nick Cage, as he's also a huge comic book fan. You might have been able to guess that based on the fact that he played the title character in 2007's Ghost Rider, as well as its sequel, Spirit of Vengeance. And he also named one of his sons Kal-El, which is Superman's Kryptonian birth name. And on top of all that, Cage also boasts an extensive comic collection, but that unfortunately made him a target of theft, as a valuable piece of his collection was stolen back in January 2000. The item in question was a copy of Action Comics number 1. 
which features Superman's first appearance and is thus one of the most prized comic issues ever published. Cage bought it for $150,000 back in 1997 and had it on display in his Los Angeles home. Some other comics were also stolen from the actor's collection, including high-grade copies of Marvel Mystery issue 71 and Detective Comics issue 27, the latter of which features the first appearance of Batman. The Action Comics copy ultimately wouldn't make its way back to Cage for over 10 years, when it was discovered in a storage unit in the San Fernando Valley in 2011. As Cage announced in a statement at the time, it is divine providence that the comic was found, and I am hopeful that the heirloom will be returned to my family. A set of valuable comic books isn't unusual for an avid collector. A dinosaur skull, on the other hand, is definitely a rarity that you won't find in a typical personal collection. But then again, Nicolas Cage is not the most typical person. In 2007, he bought a Tyrannosaurus Batar skull from a Beverly Hills gallery. Even though he received a certificate of authenticity for the piece, the massive fossil was revealed to have been stolen from the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. The United States Department of Homeland Security worked with the actor to return the skull, and he fully cooperated to turn it over. Cage later told the New York Times magazine, The dinosaur skull was an unfortunate thing. I bought it at a legitimate auction and found out it was abducted from Mongolia illegally, and then I had to give it back. Even though Cage fully supported returning the skull, he also made sure to note, I never got my money back, so that stank. It stinks! After a series of unusual purchases and reckless spending, Nick Cage nearly found himself bankrupt. He was at one time one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood, reportedly earning approximately $40 million per year at his peak in the 90s and early 2000s. He ended up spending most of his $150 million fortune on a variety of items, ranging from the previously mentioned dinosaur skull to real estate around the world. As reported by CNBC, some of his pricey purchases included a $3 million island in the Bahamas, a one $150,000 pet octopus, and a $450,000 Lamborghini, once owned by the late Shah of Iran. That was on top of 15 properties ranging from a $25 million home in California to a $10 million castle in Europe and a haunted mansion in New Orleans. Eventually, there were serious consequences to his excessive spending spree. By 2009, Cage was reported to have owed over $6 million to the IRS and was forced to sell some of his properties. Amidst his financial hardship, Cage sued his business manager, Samuel J. Levin, for fraud and mismanagement. He sought $20 million for his troubles. Levin countersued and claims that Cage's extravagant spending habits were his own problem and had nothing to do with him. The lawsuit was settled in 2010, though details of the resolution remain confidential. In a bid to dig himself out of his deep financial trouble, Cage appeared in 50 movies between 2009 and 2022, which averages out to about four per year. During this time, the Oscar winner earned himself an unfortunate reputation as a bit of a B-movie actor. To be fair though, taking on these occasionally dubious roles was less of a creative choice and more of a responsible means to get out of debt. While his deficit was accumulating, work for Cage was also drying up, though he remained level-headed about the business side of his troubles. As he recounted to GQ in 2022, the phone stopped ringing. It was like, what do you mean we're not doing National Treasure 3? It's been 14 years, why not? Well, Sorcerer's Apprentice didn't work, and Ghost Rider didn't really sell tickets, and Drive Angry, that just came and went. Ultimately though, the decision to do in 10 years what most actors manage in an entire career literally paid off, as Cage was able to crawl his way out of debt. Now that he's financially stable and in better control of his money, he's been able to dedicate his time to more meaningful projects, including 2021's Pig, for which his performance as a truffle forager earned him some of the best reviews of his career. Derek. Who has my pig? Being a high-profile celebrity can be stressful. When every aspect of someone's life and personality is magnified, it can take a toll on mental health and self-esteem. Over the years, Nicolas Cage has been the target of a series of internet jokes and memes, and for a while, he wasn't exactly cool with it. In 2018, he talked with IndieWire about this reputation, as he revealed his unease about how some of his distinctive performances have been repurposed and mugged online. As he put it, The issue is, with the advent of the internet doing these mashups where they pull these choice moments without the context of the whole film around it to support it, has created this memification, if you will. It's been branded Cage Rage, and it's frustrating. Your alphabet. I never misspelled anything! Not once, not one time! Fortunately, the flood of cage rage memes has significantly died down over the years. 
and Cage has since grown to make peace with being plastered all over the internet. As he told GQ in 2022, you can't go against that which is. Cage is now so seemingly content with his digital reputation that in the 2022 film The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, he plays a fictionalized version of himself which he saw as a chance to take ownership of his reputation. As he explained to GQ, I think it was a way of embracing what had happened to me. Due to his mother's mental illness, Nick Cage was mainly raised by his father, August Coppola, and the two men forged a close relationship over the years. Coppola exposed his son to great examples of cinema, like the classics of Italian filmmaker Federico Fellini and German Expressionism, as Cage noted to GQ in 2022. He was always the smartest man in the room when he walked into any room. And in a 2013 interview with The Guardian, Cage also credited his father as the strongest influence on his career. Thanks to this cinematic education, Coppola died of a heart attack on October 29, 2009. But death hasn't stopped him from still being a big influence on his son's life. Cage and his current wife, Rico Shibata, got married on his father's birthday. And as he revealed to GQ, if they have a baby girl, they plan on naming her Lennon Augie, as Augie was his father's nickname. Cage's father also continues to influence his son's on-screen career, as he served as inspiration for his performance as Dracula in the upcoming film Renfield, as he declared to GQ, August Coppola's coming back, and he's coming back as Dracula. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, please contact the Crisis Text Line by texting HOME to 741-741. Call the National Alliance on Mental Illness Helpline at 1-800-950-NAMI-6264 or visit the National Institute of Mental Health website. 